Um, we've reached the end of um, another PyCon South Africa. Um, kind of strange thinking that this is the fourth one. <laughs> um, how did we, we get here so fast? Um, but before I kind of get into, well, kind of what's, well, before I kind of leap into thanking people, um, so the library that I mentioned during um, the panel this morning is BB Recorder, Black Box Recorder. Um, it keeps logs at whatever verbosity you want in RAM um, and then only attempts to send them out via your logging infrastructure if your process crashes. Um, how's this for abusing organizer privileges? <laughs> um, then um, after here, uh, the dinner outing. Um, we're going to be going to Europa. Um, some people from Joburg told me last night that there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the one we're going to is in Parkview. It's about, I think, about a 10 minute drive north of here. Um, and then uh, sprints. Sprints are happening tomorrow um, at, 44 st at Josie Hub at 44 Stanley. It's just down the road. Um, you could probably walk there. I, mean, I have walked there um, from here. Um, yeah, uh, we'll be getting going. I think doors are officially opening at Optus 8, um, but feel free to arrive whenever you wake up. Um, there will be coffee and food. Um, yeah, and there will also be software commentary. Uh, does anyone who is doing a sprint want to quickly say a few words? So for people who were here last year, you'll know that we're working on a project called Pygame CFFI, which is a CFFI implementation that's kind of giving the same interface as Pygame. We're going to be doing further work on it tomorrow and Sunday. If you think it sounds like an interesting thing to work on, or you want to learn about Pygame, or you want to learn about CFFI, come join us. Um, we're happy to teach you and tell you stuff rather than actually doing work we're meant to be doing. Um. Um, I'm probably going to be making Hypothesis and Twisted play nicer together, um, which hopefully won't drive me completely insane. Um, but otherwise, I'm interested in any interesting things that other people are doing, just not the boring ones. Um, I think Mache is going to be hacking on VMprof. Um, yeah, and there are going to be yeah a bunch of people learning Python um, shell and Git stuff at Software Carpentry. Oh yes, um, Waffer, the conference software, well, the software that runs the PyCon Today conference website, uh, was written by a bunch of us here um, in anger after <laughs> uh, the first PyCon um, in an attempt to make our lives better. Um, we're still working on it. <laughs> um, it might get used to DebConf. Oh, um. oh, for those of you who don't know, uh, DebConf, so Debian, the Debian Developer Conference is taking place in Cape Town next year, in July-ish, end of June, beginning of July. Um, so, yeah, uh, come along to that if you're keen. It's free, wow. And it has food. <laughs> um, uh, no, it's not. Um, it's too early to be completely sure. <laughs> um, but uh, very likely Cape Town. Um, so the plan, in my head at least, um, is uh, that it kind of spends two years in one city um, and then two years in another. So for the next two years, that probably means going back to Cape Town, unless someone volunteers to organize it in Durban or Bloemfontein or somewhere. Um, um, speaking of next year's PyCon ZA, um, I'm, I'm not going to lead organizing it. Um, what I'd like to do in instead is to actually work on getting a uh, PyCon Today NGO set up so that um, PyCon Today can be its own kind of separate thing. Um, so I'm looking for um, yeah, for people to step up to the plate and um, yeah, have a go at running this thing. But yeah, uh, more on that a bit later. Okay, uh, some thank yous. Um, it takes quite a lot of work to make a conference happen, and I don't do all of it myself. I don't think it would even be possible for any one person to do it themselves. Um, so first of all, I want to thank you, thank the organizing team. 
Um, so if the organizing team could stand up so people can see them. Um, um, Adam, Neil, Laura, um, Hussein, who's at the back. Uh, thank you to all of you for being with me through all of this organizational process, through wrangling sponsors and responding to people's emails, um, finding venues for um, the conference and for the speaker's dinner and for um, conference outings, um, dealing with all of the many, many, many little things that go into making a conference happen. Uh, thank you to all of the speakers and panelists and people gave lightning talks. Um, without speakers, there really isn't a conference. Um, for those of you who don't know, I don't think we have ever rejected a Python talk for PyCon South Africa. <laughs> um, we have rejected a few talks which weren't about Python. Um, so if you have something to speak about, don't be shy. The organizers will thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, uh, maybe just a quick word on that. So other conferences have complicated selection criteria. <laughs> um, we, we don't have that problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Let's go with yes. <laughs> um, a big thank you to Carl. Um, um, who really is doing the video for free. We just paid for him to get here. Um, and you've been awesome. Um, oh, those of you who, um, you may have seen Carl stand up and mention uh, Tim Video and various projects for kind of making all of this video recording thing more open, more painless, um, better. Um, so if, you're, if you have a conference, hint, <laughs> um, and you need it videoed, um, chat to Carl about how he works, even if you can't come out, I'm sure he'll have good suggestions. Um, lastly, thank all of you for attending. Um, having attendees is really what makes a conference worthwhile. Um, one of the scariest parts of organizing is that time when you've started organizing and no one has signed up yet. <laughs> um, so thank you all for, for coming and I hope you had a good time. Uh, and while we're saying thank you, I want to say thank you again to our sponsors. Um, the um, Without the sponsors, I think ticket prices would probably be double what they are. Um, and that wouldn't be great. Um, so thank you very much. Um, thank you to Take A Lot um, for um, being our platform sponsor. Um, and to Prekilt again for um, being with PyCon today right from the start. Um, thank you to Oracle, um, and thank you to Bryn for agreeing to be on the panel and giving us some insights into um, the big crazy world of Oracle Cloud. Um, thank you to, um, to Amazon, who've been one of our biggest sponsors regularly throughout the history of PyCon today. Um, thank you to DBD, and I still really like the shirts. Um, and thank you again to SunGuard. Um, who yeah, were around and who have agreed to give a talk next year, I think. Um, and lastly, thank you again to the Python Software Foundation, the sort of umbrella community organization for Python. Um, they are really, really, really good about supporting communities everywhere for all sorts of Python-related things. Um, cool. So um, we kind of reached the end of the conference. So. I was trying to decide whether I should say something. So <laughs> I, I stayed up late last night thinking about what to say. And I thought, what happens next? Like w um, we've just had two days. Um, we've heard, um, hopefully, a lot of good ideas. Um, and I found with conferences, it's tempting to, well, it's maybe not tempting. It's easy to kind of leave the conference full of excitement and ideas and you go out into the world and nothing has changed. Um, <laughs> it's just your day-to-day -day life again. Um, you have dim memories of 
talks that you attended, of things that you're interested in, um, but somehow you never get around to it. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to kind of talk a bit about, about where do we go from here. So, we've heard a lot of good things during this conference. Um, but we've also learned, heard about a lot of bad things. Um, so, I'm going to focus on the bad things for a moment. Um, so, we've heard about imposter syndrome, about the need for more diversity. We've heard about Django's flaws as a web framework. <laughs> um, about Python's lack of a good concurrency solution. Um, about how much civic information is locked up in scanned PDFs. <laughs> um, about how many scientists need to be taught coding, or just people in general. Um, about the difficulty of seemingly simple tasks, like importing a CSV file. <laughs> um, and about people's cars being stolen in Johannesburg. Um, the world is really full of things that, that need fixing. Um, and the question is, do we care enough to fix them? Um, Ten years ago, I had never coded Python professionally. I had never been to a Python software conference. I hadn't even been to a Python user group meeting. Um, but I got a bit lucky. Um, I took a job at which there were some pretty good Python developers and where I had some time to spend learning things. Um, I worked through the Python tutorial, all of it. Um, then a few years later, I worked through it all again. Um, I read the Python quick reference, which I heartily recommend, all of it. Um, it wasn't quick. <laughs> um, I started work on a personal Python project uh, with a friend. Uh, I'm still working on it. At first, all it did was read text files into a database. Um, slowly, it grew a user interface. And then some domain-specific languages and programmatically s generated SQL queries with tens of joins. And then a tiny HTML rendering engine, so a browser. <laughs> Um, it's not finished. We haven't even released version 1.0. Um, I'm quietly proud of it. <laughs> um, I wrote some games um, in Pygame with friends again. Um, the first game was terrible. Um, we knew nothing. <laughs> um, but it was about chickens. <laughs> uh, with guns. <laughs> uh, the second game was better. Um, for the third game, we bit off way more than we could chew. Um, the fourth game was pretty awesome. Uh, the fifth game wasn't too bad. Um, I changed jobs. I relearned Java. I changed the game, and I learned JavaScript. Um, I thought I was smart enough to handle threading in tons of mutable state. I was wrong. I learned Twisted. Um, I couldn't figure out what deferreds did. I wrote my own deferred library. Then I threw it away. <laughs> it, that was a good decision. <laughs> um, at some point, I asked the P Python Software Foundation for money to port a library to Python 3. Um, because I read a blog post where they said, we will give you money to port things to Python 3. Um, they said yes. Um, the money was enough to pay for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was really exciting anyway. Um, we ported another library to Python 3. Uh, this library was harder. Um, we fixed bugs in Python. Uh, that was hard too. Our patches were accepted very slowly. <laughs> in one case, we had a patch in the Python bug tracker for three years. <laughs> Someone suggested I run PyCon South Africa. I had no idea how little I knew about running conferences, so I said yes. <laughs> I asked the Python Software Foundation if I could run Python South Africa. They didn't know how little I knew either, so they said yes too. <laughs> um, luckily, I got guidance and support from people who did know a thing or two about running conferences. None of them were developers. Somehow it all worked. I suspect mostly because everyone was so excited. For those of you who at the first PyCon South Africa, we got, we got amazing international speakers. Um, I don't think any PyCon anywhere has had that concentrated a lineup of great speakers. But the best talk was given by a local developer who wasn't convinced his talk would interest anyone. I ran PyCon today three more times because I wasn't sure how to hand it over to others and I didn't want it to not happen. Um, this is my Python journey so far. All of you are at different places in your own Python journeys. And if I were to share some advice from mine, it might go as follows. Find some people you can learn from and make time to learn yourself. Take time to master the basics. Um, you'll be surprised how few people do. Um, start a project and do it with a friend. Um, keep learning new things. 
even if they're not Python. Um, unfortunately, failure is not going to go away. Keep building things anyway. Um, don't be scared to ask people for money um, or for other kinds of support, even from people who are not developers. Sometimes amazing things come from one clueless person saying, how hard can it be? <laughs> Often success relies more on other people being excited than anything else. And lastly, stuff doesn't stop being hard. Um, so you're going to have to care. But it's probably going to surprise you what you care about. Who can say where in this complicated journey I changed from novice to apprentice to developer to senior developer. Um, up close, it's just a blur of coding and relationships, of building and learning, and of success and failure. We're all unique imposters on our own separate journeys, and our paths are not directly comparable. And often, wisdom seems to me largely about shutting up when you don't know the answer. If all of the broken things that I've mentioned are going to get fixed, from diversity to removing the global interpreter lock, it's us that's going to have to fix them. And it seems unlikely that anyone is going to give us permission or declare us worthy. So go build something.